My name is Manuela Gaez. Hi everyone, it's John Waite here. Hiya, my name's Kim Joy and I am from the Great British Bake Off. Today I'm going to answer questions that can tell you a little bit more about Bake Off. <laughs> Don't start barking, dog. How hot does a tent get? Um, so, very hot. <laughs> Dante's Inferno hot. My makeup was on the floor. It reached 34 degrees for um, chocolate week. And you know that chocolate melts at 28 degrees. So yes, it gets really hot. <laughs> don't break now, don't break now. <laughs> Did you melt away? Disaster. I was constantly like this as well. Do you shoot on weekends only? For the most part we shot only on weekends. I think there were one or two days where we did a Friday. Very occasionally in the week as well. How did you balance the show with your everyday life? Did you still have to go to work? At the time, I was also a project manager in software. So I was consulting and I still had my clients that was in Birmingham, which is two hours away from London, which is where I live. Yes, we had to go to work still. I was a law student at the time, so I would have an exam on Friday, go down to Bristol in the UK where it was filmed, to film the Bake Off on Saturday and Sunday and then come back on Sunday night to have another law degree exam. Um, so I actually quit my job <laughs> so that I could focus completely on the Bake Off and my partner Nabil really supported me through that, otherwise I don't know how I would have done it. Do you like when the hosts come by and chat with you whilst you're baking? Yeah, I liked it because you know when I'm baking I'm just in my own world and I don't feel like is real. <laughs> I think I love baking with people around so I didn't actually mind you know them coming and I think you're just less lonely. No it was very helpful actually to have uh, Mel and Sue. We had Mel and Sue at the time and they were very lovely. They were a great emotional support. How much information do they give you beforehand for the signature bake or the showstopper challenge? I think you get a, a full brief of maybe two sides of A4 paper and then you have about two or three weeks to practice. So you do get a good brief. We got uh, pretty much all the information for those because they're not like the technicals where you're not meant to know. How much information do you actually get for the technical challenges? We get no information. Nada, nothing, rien. Make the jam. Make the creme patissière. Bake a cake. Not a lot, not a lot at all, not enough. Earlier weeks, you get more information, but as the weeks go on, you get less and less. Uh, which isn't ideal. <laughs> How serious did you take at home practice bakes? So I made sure that things like shoe pastry, like for example, I know that takes half an hour and I practice that through, and then I practice the next element, so like the decorating, and I'd add it all together so I know exactly how long something takes. I was like, like Mary Berry, I was that serious. I was like, get out of the kitchen, don't speak to me. Put, bar, bar the windows, put newspaper on the window so people couldn't see. Did you have to spend your own money on that home practice bakes? I did. Well, I didn't try to spend my boyfriend's money because I was an impoverished, destitute student at the time. But I think we got about 100 quid from the production company to practice. And I made a pecan pie which cost 25 quid every time. Uh, we get some money to um, spend for our ingredients, uh, though I did spend more than that. How does wardrobe work? Do you choose your own outfit? Uh, yes, we choose our own own outfits were just told obviously in you know, as classic, no big logo, you know, colourful and stuff and so yeah, just it's just your style. Yes, uh, we do, uh, just as long as nobody's wearing like the same outfit or everyone's wearing green or some weird coincidence like that. Do you ever need to wear the same thing on separate shooting days? Yes, you have to wear the same thing two days in a row. Yeah, I think it's pretty common knowledge and we wear the same outfit on both days. For editing and for filming it's just easier. What time did you start filming on average? I started filming at about six, seven-ish, really early, which is hard because I'm not a morning person at all. So the first few episodes, we started at like 6 a.m. until 9 p.m. because there was so many of us. Did everyone get along? Yeah, <laughs> we've got a WhatsApp group, we all chat on there, um, and yeah, we had a great bunch, so it's been lovely. 
I think when you go through some things that intense, like we all did get along, and I think, you know, if we didn't support each other throughout this experience, things would have been much more difficult. What do you think? You put 10 people in a sweaty, clammy tent, get them drunk on Prosecco the night before. Not everyone's gonna get along, honey. What is Bull Hollywood like off camera? This is a very funny question, actually. You know, Paul Hollywood is a nice guy. I think, you know, he clearly has a role to play and I think he plays it really well. Oh, I actually didn't really talk to him off camera, like, at all. So I have no idea. <laughs> How much time went by before your showstopper challenge to when the judges actually tasted it? It was probably about 40 minutes, the longest 40 minutes of my life. It depended, so like the earlier weeks, uh, it, there was more time in between because there's more people to film, the reactions and all of that, whereas later weeks, it was a bit shorter. What were you nervous about most before the first tapping? The most stressful thing was judging. I hated judging. I was most most nervous about kind of meeting everybody and making sure that you know we all got along um, and of course we're all worried about not being the first one to go home and luckily I wasn't. I was probably most nervous about farting on camera. What do they do with uneaten food? What? What's, what's uneaten food? I don't know. Whereas it's never uneaten food. So the judges give their feedback and then all the crew pick up on which ones are the tastiest and then they all go and demolish that. <laughs> no, actually, if your cake didn't get completely annihilated by the crew and the production team, then you know it wasn't a very good bake. So hopefully you come back into the tent after your interview and just hope that the cake was gone on a single crumb left. How has Bake Off changed your life? Bake Off has been the best thing that's ever happened to me. I mean, I've done a book now, I write recipes all the time, I get to do what I love. It's just incredible. I had a great career that I loved in IT, uh, but then I decided to quit my job in December. And now I'm just, you know, a fully kind of baker, cook, and I'm on a mission to bring back, you know, French food made easy. So yeah, it really changed my life because now I live from my passion. It's made me take myself much less seriously. It's made me very hard working and it's made me a sassy queen. Do you still love to bake? I do. I think I wouldn't be doing what I do if I didn't. Of course I love to bake. What's the question? I think after the Bake Off a lot of us are saying oh we're going to take like two months off or something like that uh, but I just, I just took about a week and then I couldn't resist. Uh, thank you so much for watching today and I'm really excited for the new season um, and I hope that you are excited too. My book Baking with Kim Joy is out now so we can get it. This is my new book, A Flash in the Pan, Simple Speedy Stove Hot Recipes. Bye!